basic underlying principles of a roller coaster start with one of the more fundamental laws of all of physics, and that is the law of conservation of energy. When we start to talk about the law of conservation of energy, what we're really dealing with is, is, is a situation that we know that in a closed system, the energy is conserved. And what that means is that energy is transformed from one type to another, but the total amount of energy stays the same. Energy is defined as the ability to do work, and so what that begs is then a definition of work. And work is the idea of moving something by using a force on it through a distance. At the bottom of a roller coaster, the object has no potential energy. The train has no potential energy. So what we have to do is we have to supply energy to the system to bring it up and give it energy. So the, the machine is adding energy, supplying a force. That force is moving the object through a distance, and that's what we call work. On a roller coaster, what we deal with are two basic types of energy called potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is the type of energy of position. And on a roller coaster, we're talking about gravitational potential energy because we're dealing with the height that a roller coaster might attain. With kinetic energy, what we're dealing with is the energy of velocity or speed. And so as an object gains speed, it gains kinet what we call kinetic energy. And then as we get to the bottom of the first hill, we're projected upward again by the track into another hill. At that point, we're losing speed and gaining height. And so throughout this entire process, it's one series of conversions between potential energy and kinetic energy after we do the initial work to get the system to a spot of energy that we like. To illustrate this, uh, the idea of work, potential energy, kinetic energy, and so on, we can take the idea of a lift hill here where we're moving up and then we'll be coming down the other side. What we have at the bottom here is a situation where we have zero potential energy. Potential energy is zero, and so we're going to do some work on it. As we work our way up the hill, what we're really saying then is that we are applying a force to an object through a distance. Inertia is a property of matter that was described through Newton's first law. And what Newton told us in his first law is that objects at rest remain at rest, objects in motion remain in motion, unless acted upon by an external force. And what he was really telling us is that you know, about the property of inertia. Objects have this, this inertia which tends to maintain their motion. If you set an object in motion, its inertia will naturally carry it in that motion and maintain that motion until something forces it not to do it. There it goes. No g-forces. Oh. Gravity is another concept that Newton described for us, and it deals with the mutual attraction between two objects. Now, when we talk about gravity for a roller coaster or we talk about uh, gravitational potential energy, what we're talking about is that force of attraction between the Earth and ourselves and ourselves back to the Earth. So that, gravi that gravitational force then causes us to accelerate based on that force. And Newton's second law tells us that an object that has an unbalanced force applied to it will accelerate. We can think of uh, a roller coaster as a gravity ride, if you will. We, are, we, we have to do work to work against gravity. We get to the top of the hill now. We worked against gravity. Now we've got some gravitational potential energy. If we allow ourselves to move with gravity, gravity will freely accelerate us downward. We then have to go against gravity again as we decelerate up the hill. And so uh, gravitation is a universal force. Uh, it's, uh, it's something we experience continuously. And it's one of the primary driving forces behind roller coasters. Good ride.